since this is on your in-class activity, I wanted to make sure I did another example of Bolzano's theorem and the intermediate value theorem. Basically, remember that Bolzano's theorem is very, very similar to the intermediate value theorem. The intermediate value theorem basically says, if I have these two x values and they make these two y values, that means that there's some x value between a and b. There's two x values between what I started with that's gonna produce a y value between what I got out as their answers. So Bolzano's theorem is more specific because it's, it's only talking about x-intercepts. So that means that essentially, in this case, if I find an x-intercept between six and seven, that means that if I were to plug in six and seven, I would get a positive number and a negative number because zero has to be somewhere between a positive number and a negative number. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna to try to find it using this big, long, ugly uh, function up here. And basically what I wanted to go ahead and mention to you is I already know the truth. I already know that these are the x values that are gonna give me zero. And let's be honest, these are imaginary numbers. These are irrational numbers. And that's the only pretty number. If you were to try to do this problem without knowing the answers, it would not be fun because there's no formula you can use. The quadratic formula would only work if it was x squared, this is x to the fifth. There's no formula for an x to the fifth polynomial. Also, long division and synthetic division are only gonna get you that five, they're not gonna get you the other ones. It's just gonna be nasty to try to find these other answers. And so that's why this, this process that I'm getting ready to show you is very handy. So let me go ahead and get started. And like I said, I'm gonna go ahead and start off by saying, let's plug in um, six and seven and see what we get out. So that's what I did. I started uh, with my calculator and I plugged in x is six. And then I also plugged in x is seven. And once I got those answers, when I plugged in six, I got negative 130. And when I plugged in seven, I got 492. Now, if you notice, I wrote all these numbers down instead of typing them in the calculator, because in all honesty, it took me, the first time I did this, it took me eight minutes to go all the way through the calculations just because of the typing it in. And yes, I realize that typing it in your calculator does take the majority of this time, but really and truly the process is simple. It's just calculator heavy. So let me point out again, when I plugged in six, I got negative 130. When I plugged in seven, I got positive 492. Since I got a positive number and a negative number, I know that zero has to be somewhere in between them. Now, the question is, what number do we try next? Well, since this negative 130 is closer to zero than 492, I'm probably gonna try a number closer to six than to seven. So what I tried first was I tried 6.4, okay? When I plugged in 6.4, it gave me negative 24.04416. Now, since this is a negative number and that's a positive number, I know it's gonna be somewhere in here. So another number that I tried was 6.5 to see what helped, okay? So let me write this down, 6.5. When I plugged in 6.5, I got 27.46875. Now, I've narrowed down my playing field. I know not just that it's between 6 and 7, but I know even more that it's between 6.4 and 6.5. Why? Because that's a negative number, and that's a positive number. I know it has to be between them, okay? 6.4 and 6.5. Now, once I've got a positive number and a negative number, I can keep going. Now, if it only asked me for one decimal place, I'd probably look at it here and say, oh, Negative 6.4 is closer to zero because it gives me negative 24 as opposed to positive 27. Negative 24 is closer than 27. So I would probably say 6.4 is gonna be closer. So let me try numbers close to 6.4. So I tried, in this case, 6.44, okay? When I plugged in 6.44, I got negative 4.826360218, okay? When I plugged in, I'm just gonna pick uh, the one right next to it, uh, 6.45, okay? If I plug in 6.45, I got 0 0.26245906.25. Now, let me point out, again, I got a negative number and I got a positive number. So, my x-intercept has to be between 6.44 and 6.45. Now, at this point, I'm probably thinking it's closer to 6.45 because this is close to the zero. Now that I've said that, I wanna make sure. Uh, if I, like I said, if I were to stop here at two decimal places, I'd probably say 6.45 is gonna be closer. Now, I'm gonna go one step further. I don't wanna just try 
to stop here. I want to go to three decimal places. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick a number between 6.44 and 6.45 and see what happens. Now, like I said, this is closer to zero. So I'm going to try something close to 6.45. And what I tried was 6.449. Okay, when I tried 6.449, I got negative 0.25162327932793. Here's the thing. At this moment, here's my positive number. Here's my negative number. So that's the thing. It's got to be between 6.449 and 6.450. Now, that's the important part. That's a good distinction right now. Now, I'm also going to make sure I mention that I know what the final answer was again. And if I were to do three decimal places, I would probably go with um, the 6.449 is probably going to be a little bit closer than the 6.450. Just, just an opinion because like I said, 0 0.26 versus 0 0.25. 0 0.25 is a little bit closer. So that would be the answer I would go with is 6.449. I know I did it again uh, just to make myself really uh, get annoyed and, and, and just go as far as I can. I did 6.4. 494 and I did 6.4495. So I've got actually four decimal places here. Now, when I did this, 6.4494 gave me negative 0 0.04612944114. When I plugged in 6.4495, I got 0 0.00527299263. So here I am, four decimal places deep, and I've got 6.4494 and 6.4495. And that one seems to be closest to zero. So I would go with this 6.4495. Now, I'm going to point out to you, this 4 plus the square root of 6 is the exact answer, but that's not a pretty answer. In fact, uh, 4 plus the square root of 6 is 6.4494897432. That's really darn close to what I had here, 6.4495. So again, let me repeat one more time. Bolzano's theorem says, make sure you have a negative number and a positive number and you have an x-intercept in between. Hopefully that helps.